Welcome, everyone, to the first team NFL draft and college football podcast. Make sure you subscribe to the channel before we get going because we are only a couple weeks away from the 2024 NFL draft officially kicking off on April 25th, which means we're bringing you guys a little some late interviews here to give you some insight into the class. And we have one of the breakout stars in the tight end group this year, AJ Barner out of the University of Michigan, who spent some time at the University of Indiana before transferring to Michigan part of the national championship team in the 2023 season. We have AJ joining the show now. AJ, really appreciate it again, man. I know we were talking a little bit before we started. It's been a grind, I'm sure. But thank you so much for joining the show, man. It's really appreciated. Of course. Thanks for having me on here. Oh, no doubt, brother. No doubt. So, so AJ, I guess just kind of the, the easy overall question to get things started is just with only a couple weeks left before the NFL draft officially kicking off, how has everything been for you? You know, how do you feel like just kind of the overall process has been going? We'll obviously get a little more specific into the specific parts of the draft process, but overall, how do you feel like you tackled this draft process? For sure. I mean, it's been busy. Uh, I've been all over the country, you know, I've been training for a long time, uh, finished the season and then got right into it, but I feel like I'm doing a good job. Um, just trying to enjoy it as well, but, uh, yeah, just enjoying the whole process. Well, I definitely wanted to ask about your process, obviously, of ending up at Michigan. Because, again, for people that don't know, spent some time in Indiana, and you were a producer for the University right. of Indiana for several years. And then you make the decision, though, before your final year to go to the University of Michigan. So just take me through, I guess, a little bit of your thought process, how the transfer portal, I guess, was able to help you navigate and make the best decision for you and how you ended up at the University of Michigan. Yeah. I mean, it's a super tough decision. I, I really did love Indiana. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I felt like there was a, I guess you could just say some instability there. You know, I was playing with a lot of different quarterbacks, uh, a couple of different offensive coordinators. And then unfortunately, Coach Allen did un did, did get fired at the end of the year. So I kind of felt like, you know, as, as a football player in college, you know, your eligibility is on a ticking time clock. So I yeah. felt like it was in my best interest to explore other options. And, uh, you know, Michigan had an had a opportunity for me to, you know, help come in and uh, compete for a national championship and, and become a better player. Well, and obviously you get to spend that one year with a couple of great offensive minds. Of course, Jim Harbaugh off to the Los Angeles Chargers now as the head coach, but Sharon Moore now taking over as the head coach who was the offensive coordinator. Can you give us some insight, AJ, for your year playing for those guys? Mm -hmm. Just how lucky, I guess, both the Chargers and the University of Michigan are in the future now moving forward with what they have, what they had with Coach Harbaugh and what now they have with Sharon Moore moving forward. For sure. I mean, both of them are just phenomenal, great uh, football minds and just great leaders as well. Um, and, you know, with Coach going to the Chargers, you know, he has NFL experience, which was huge for me because obviously my goal is to play on Sundays. And I feel like Michigan as a program and Coach Moore is going to continue to do the same thing. There's really no better place to go and get prepared for the NFL than Michigan. And, and those two guys combined with the other coaches that we had on the staff and, and the amount of talented players that we had just to be around them build the relationships with them, learn with them, but also just, you know, get to know them as people was just, you know, amazing for me and, and something that I'll cherish for, for the rest of my life. And obviously I want to ask about your development in that one year at Michigan, but I, I, I really want to start us off with this, man. You were a part of a national championship at the University of Michigan. It had been a long time. Yeah. Your lone year there, able to help the boys get to the mountaintop. What, what was that season like for you guys, man? Just undefeated. National champs, first time in a long time. Michigan's able to, to hoist the trophy. What was that season like? Special side of it. Yeah, it was unreal. I mean, Michigan and Michigan football like deserves that. You know, it's a, it's one of the, it's the best. I mean, the most winningest program in college football history. So just start with that. But then I feel like, you know, the guys that we had, like that was the goal the whole time. Like when I went to Michigan, it was like, yo, we went to the playoff last year, we lost. But this year, like, it's championship or bust. And, like, the whole team really had that mindset the whole year. So to go 15-0 and and accomplish all the goals that we had set out for ourselves, you know, it was definitely amazing. But at the same time, like, I expected nothing less. And I know the rest of the guys uh, had that same mindset. And uh, the whole journey was just, you know, so much fun on and off the field with the guys. And I feel like the biggest thing for us is, like, we were extremely close as a team off the field as well. Um, so yeah, I think that it was just, it was just an amazing year and, and, and something that I'll just look on, look back on and, you know, we get our ring, uh, the spring game coming up. So I can't wait to see that. Um, and then it'll probably feel even more real just because 
the whole process, you know, you win the national championship and then you start training for the NFL and it's like, you, you do get to enjoy it, but you don't at the same time. So. So when I was doing research, I wanted to ask about a little bit of, I guess, more of a funny question is that you're an yeah. Ohio guy, right? Yeah. In Aurora. And you mentioned, you know, you're back in Cleveland right now. Yeah. And then you go to Michigan, right? right? So I imagine there's a lot of Buckeye fans, maybe where you grew up a little bit was, well, what was the initial reaction, I guess, maybe by some folks back home when you decided to go to Michigan for that final year? For sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely from, you know, Buckeye country, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, but for me, I've always kind of been somebody that's just like flown under the radar, done my own thing. And I'm cool with being like, I don't know, not, not public, like an enemy, but like Ohio state never showed me any love. And, uh, you know, obviously sure. being from Ohio, like you root for the Buckeyes growing up, mm -hmm. but you know, there's plenty of great Michigan players that have came from Ohio, Desmond Howard, Charles Woodson, Elvis Gerbach, I could go on and on. And, you know, I felt like me as a person, I fit Michigan's culture, blue collar, discipline. Like when you put that wing helmet on, you represent, you know, all the great guys that came before you. And I feel like I'm a Michigan, I'm an Ohio boy. I'm a Michigan man though. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And obviously we, you know, we talk about the, the on the field accomplishments as a team, but you also had your most productive season as a college football player. You were a part of a dynamic tight end room i mean if there wasn't a better sure. one-two punch in college football i'm not sure who had it right so that one year what do you feel like that one year for you as a football player now transitioning the nfl level what did that provide for you whether that is improvements in the run game more target share like what are some things that were takeaways that you feel like really pushed your game to a higher level yeah i think the run game and just my blocking like I'm the best blocking tight end in the draft class. I feel I feel that's true wholeheartedly if you turn on the tape and then the analytics back it up as well. And when I was at Indiana, like I was more of a slot guy. If we're in 12 personnel, I'm the H or F or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then like, I just feel like, you know, the way that I'm selling myself is I haven't been the most productive guy. I can be way more productive, whether that was just because of opportunity and just the role that I was in or, you know, other factors. But if you ask me, to be productive in the past game, I can do that. If you ask me to be a great inline blocking tight end, I can do that as well. Or if you ask me to be a dog on special teams, I'm going to do that. So I feel like, you know, just all that together, I feel like sells me as a player. And I feel like my best years are ahead of me in the NFL. When I want to ask you about your, your, your f fellow counterpart in that tight end room that we're not, we're going to, we're going to be talking about a lot this off season, obviously Colston Loveland, who's yeah. for people that don't know, he's one of, I mean, he might be, he's probably the best tight end returning in college football for, for sure, this he season. Is. Can you give us a little bit of an early scouting report on him? Obviously you being a guy that was in the room with him every day, practicing with him every day. What, what, what can we expect to be talking about with him this time next year? Definitely. I mean, as long as he takes care of his business, one of the, the best tight end in the country, like you said, and one of the best, if not the best in the draft class. And I think with Colston, like he has great route running ability, um, can separate on routes. And then, you know, he catches everything that's thrown his way. He's a competitor. He's a student of the game and he's a great teammate as well. And I think all those that will serve him well. I mean, he's an Idaho kid, you know, went to Michigan. He's not like he's, you know, he has the hype around him now, but it always hasn't been like that. So he's an extremely hard worker and, a, and an even better football player. And I'm super stoked for him and the rest of the tight ends at Michigan. Cause it, I mean, if you're a tight end at Michigan, then uh, you're held to extremely high standard. And it seems like every tight end that comes out of there, you know, gets a shot in the NFL and, and C level will be no different. And, and there's some other guys in the room that will do the same thing. You are, I mean, first and foremost, you bet on yourself in the transfer portal. You went for your one year at Michigan and you have done everything to continue to improve your draft process. And you are, I mean, you're living the dream as far as like how you draw it up. You know, you go to the senior bowl, you go to Indianapolis, you had the full opportunity to put yourself out there. Let's start with the senior bowl, going down to Mobile, Alabama, competing against some of the other top, I mean, a little bit over a hundred of the top NFL draft prospects for the 2024 class. What was that experience like down at Jim Nagy's game? Yeah, it was cool. I mean, like you mentioned, you, you're exposed to a bunch of different players, a bunch of different NFL personnel. But, I mean, it's a busy week. Like, you're up early in the morning. You're going till late at night. For me, like, I did the whole week. There's some guys that show up for a practice or two and then don't play in the game. Like, it was a, it was a good experience for sure. Um, and, yeah, anytime you get the chance to play more football, I, I think you might as well do it, right? Yeah, absolutely. And then you get to go up to Indy, which another great experience. I was in Indianapolis this year, and I know I've, I've talked to a lot of prospects in the past, and I know that that week 
also is a very daunting one, tiring. Yeah. I mean, guys have told me they're waking up at 4 a.m. and they're not getting back to room until 11 and they're doing the same thing over again the next day. What was your experience like up in Indianapolis, being able to talk to the team, being able to talk to the media for your availability and just kind of going through that week the best you can? Yeah, I think the senior bowl honestly pre prepared me the most for that, like that part of just being super busy and being in the interview process. Um, and, you know, like it's just, I would just feel like the biggest thing for me is just understanding that, you know, I'm living out a dream right now. I'm at the NFL combine. I get to be here um, and have the opportunity of a lifetime. And yes, like it can be a stressful process, but like you might as well enjoy it. Um, and that's exactly what I did. I know that, you know, obviously you, you're with your group as a tight end group, right? And, and all the positions aren't in Indianapolis at the same time. But yeah. Michigan had the record for the most combine participants ever. 18 yeah. players were Indianapolis. What was it like being a part of that group, AJ? Because, I mean, yeah. you, were, you were, again, a part of history having the most guys ever in Indianapolis for sure. one team. It was awesome. Like, everywhere you looked, there was a Michigan guy with you. Um, and just to have, like you know, 18 guys there, like you mentioned, like everywhere you go, there was one of your friends there. And like, anytime we were talking about like big time football, like Michigan got brought up throughout the speakers, like just mentioning that, you know, we were at the top of the mountain and um, it was just a, a super awesome experience. And just to know that like, yes, there's 18 or 17 other guys include uh, with me there. And just to know that you belong, like I was going up against these dudes every day in practice, working out with them every day in the off season. So like it brought some confidence too. When I know you're, you're heading back to Michigan for the spring game, obviously you've yeah. been back for the pro day as well. What has it been like after a couple months of just nonstop training, being away from Michigan and being able to get back to campus a couple times down the stretch here? Yeah, it's been cool just to see all my all my buddies, all my good, you know, coaches and good friends. And uh, I think, like I mentioned, the ring ceremony will be awesome. But I think yeah. uh, just to, to see, like, you know, you go back for spring practice and the guys are out there for a long time. Like at Michigan, like we practice hard. And just to see that they're continuing to do that with Coach Moore, which I would expect nothing less. I mean, they're going to be they're going to be a really, really good football team um, in the fall. And I think uh, just to be able to go back and see that and uh yeah, I just I just love going back there and, and just working out with the guys and being around uh, as many Michigan people as possible. I'm not going to ask you about every player, obviously, that's in this class with you for Michigan, but I did want to ask about J.J. McCarthy because obviously yeah. he's a player that people have been talking about a lot, potential top 10 pick in, the, in this NFL draft. As a pass catcher that probably wanted to get with him as soon as you got on campus to really start to get that timing and that chemistry down, what, yeah. what was what is just the, I guess, your overall – I don't want to say opinion, but like what should people expect from JJ as far as what he can potentially bring on the next level as well? I would say two things and both are not physical because he has all the physical traits too, but he's a competitor and he's a winner. JJ wants to win and everything that he does. And he's shown that from his time in high school at IMG when he was in Chicago and throughout his time at Michigan. And then two, like I mentioned, he's a competitor for playing cards. If we're playing golf again, JJ wants to win and he's going to compete um, and then to touch on his physical traits, like he can put the ball wherever he needs to be. He's got plenty of arm strength, plenty of accuracy, and he's mobile in the pocket. He can extend plays. And then, I, yeah, I would oh, say sorry, too, continue. My bad, yeah, God. for me and like the rest of the mission guys, and certainly JJ, like we run an NFL style offense. JJ has mm -hmm. commanded the huddle before, knows mm -hmm. how to how to how to run the huddle, run the pre snap motions and everything. So I think that alone will set him apart and uh, make it a smoother transition for him in the NFL. And I, I just wanted to ask about the Michigan defense that you saw every day in practice, right? Because I know you guys aren't going one versus ones all the time, obviously, but for the opportunities you did to go against guys. And again, it's a long list. I'm a big fan of junior Colson, obviously, yeah. you know, Michael Barrett is in this draft class, the other linebacker, you got Braden McGregor, you got Jalen Harrell. Next year, we'll be talking about Mr. Page on the back end, Mr. Moore at the safety. Right. Will Johnson, probably first round pick next year. For sure. Talk to me about playing against a defense like that every day. Like there's no perceived weakness there. Like you no. are playing against dudes everywhere. Yeah. I mean, the first thing with them is uh, what Coach Harbaugh stresses is just a run wall. Like you mentioned the linebackers, 
Jalen, uh, and then Jalen and Braden on the edge, Derek Moore, Josiah Stewart, and then the interior guys, Chris Jenkins, Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant, uh, Cam Good, who, who's, in the, who's in the draft class as well, and then that doesn't even get into the secondary. And the crazy thing is a lot, of the, a lot of those guys are returning, so I think just competing against them every day in practice um, made it difficult for us. Like, they were truly the best defense in the country, hands down. And I mentioned, you know, Michigan practices, I would think, just as much and, and harder than anyone else. And, and going against them in spring ball and fall camp really was iron sharpens iron. So, yeah, I mean, they're they're just incredible. And we, ha we had a bunch of really talented players on that defense. And I know we talked about it a little bit, but what has just kind of been the, I guess, highlights of being able to speak to these teams and maybe just a little feedback on what they see from you and, and, and how excited some of these teams are potentially getting you a part of their program moving forward? <laughs> For sure. I think, you know, I touched on Michigan's offense being very pro pro like um, compared to other co colleges. And I think being able to sit down in the meetings and talk over like pre snap what's going on and then my responsibility on the plays. I think, you know, I've done a really, really good job of that. And then, you know, I touched on my blocking ability like most tight ends don't want to do well they want to do it but like you know it, they haven't done it and i think you know being that i've done that and then the fact that i can be in the slot like i'm not i'm 6'6 253 pounds but like i can move too and i can yeah. be a complete tight end so i think that you know has really helped me in the interview process and then just getting to know uh you know the coaches and uh just telling them about myself about my upbringing and, and what they're going to get and i think uh it's been just cool to just you know, shake everyone's hand and uh, make connections throughout the process too. And I know since you were in Mobile, you were in Indianapolis and obviously doing the the interview circuit now, you've probably spoken to just about every team at this point, but yeah. kind of leading up into the draft and maybe a couple weeks prior to this, who are some teams that have been kind of showing heavy interest, maybe top 30 visits if you can disclose? Like what, what are sure. some teams that are kind of sticking out to you right now? I mean, you mentioned it, like you really talked to all of them. Like I was at Senior Bowl, you talked to every single team there. I was at the Pro Day, you talked to every single team there. And then there's been some some other ones that I've had, you know, I'd say probably 20, at least 20 of the, the 32 that I've had meetings on Zoom with. And then nice. I've, I'm going on five top 30 visits. I've been on three already and got two more. So there's definitely some interest. But I feel like, you know, with me, like I'm going to be a guy that, I'm not going to be a day one pick. I could be, you know, later on day two and, and, and into day three. So it really could be any of the 32. Like, you just really don't know. And some teams don't want to show their hand. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, like, I'm kind of just trying to keep a keep a level head just in, and not think about one place just because I want it to be, like, wherever I go. Like, it's just, like, I'm ready to go. And then my last question for you, AJ, again, I really appreciate your time. It, it's kind of a little bit of a two-parter. It's just yeah. two weeks away. How excited are you for just for this opportunity that's coming very shortly here? And and where will you be spending the draft day? Do you have a, a party plan? Like what, what family? What do you what do you got um, going on that day? Yeah, the first part just stoked. Like all the work that I've put in, um, everything that I've been through in the past month, and then just to go and and you know whatever team chooses me and believes in me, like I'm just excited to go play football again and, and prove them right and prove that I am one of the best if not the best tight end in this draft class and can be a really, really good player on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then for the draft, I'll be home in Cleveland. I got a bunch of uh, close friends and close fam family that I'm going to have come over. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Like I mentioned, like you really don't know where you're going to, where you're going to go and at what time. So it can be kind of hard to, you know, tell people to come over at this time and like, you just don't know. So, but I'll be in Cleveland and uh, have plenty of, plenty of the people that uh, help get me here uh, around for that moment. Well, AJ, I just want to extend a big congratulations again to you, man. Thank you so much for joining the show today. Good luck in a couple weeks, man. Best of luck on the career.